welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we gather for worship on this day, my apologies, I didn't know my mic was on. Well, actually, I did know it was on, but I didn't think it would pick me up that far away. I'm here. I only hope I didn't spill any state secrets. <laughs> it's going to be quite a day today. Oh, I got up this morning after the, I think the sun rises around 6.15 or something like that. I got up after that, and it was still cloudy and dreary, and you know, you kind of drag yourself into the day. But then, before too long, by the time I got to the kitchen, the clouds were starting to part. And sunlight just poured into the room that I was in, and I thought to myself, it's going to be a great day. And I think, for me, that's a kind of like a revelation of the resurrection, how it must have been for the disciples to receive the light of the open tomb, and their response was, this is going to be a great day. And they meant every day for the rest of their lives. And I pray that as well. The song that it sprung into my heart, which it took a while to figure out because I only had a phrase of it, is this is my father's world. It just seemed to me that something great was happening all around. And I could remember just faintly the words, this is my father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This morning I talk about how in that rustling grass, the presence of the Lord is in the form of the Good Shepherd. And while there are many places in Scripture that talk about the Good Shepherd, the one place we all think of is where? Is the 23rd Psalm. Right? How would you like us to begin together today as we'll be thinking about Jesus, our Good Shepherd, to read together the 23rd Psalm? Lord, my shepherd, I shall not want He makes me lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside still waters. Restores my life. Leads me in the paths of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. We worship today, may we feel the presence of the Lord as real as in the rustling grass know that the Good Shepherd is with us. Amen. Comes now Michelle to share the announcements of the day. Good morning. I agree. Sun was shining this morning and my husband called me out to the kitchen just to look at it with him and that was great. Um, we, uh, this family, John and Michelle, Christina and myself, have been working hard, you know, presenting their services for you. Um, however, sometimes we would like a little help. So, um, Christine has decided she would come up on Tuesday evening, and anyone who would like to perhaps learn, run the slideshows um, for us on Sundays, um, she will give a little presentation to anyone that would like to do that. And that's this Tuesday at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Just show you how to do her part. We still would like someone to help us with running the camera once in a while. So um, if you can do that, let us know, and John will show you all the things about running the camera. Mother's Day is Sunday, May the 9th. We want to honor those women who have cared for us and loved us like a mother. If you have a certain memory you'd like to share, we're, we'll be calling on you to do that on, on Mother's Day. So um, if you have something like that you'd like to share, you can let us, let us know ahead of time or pass or call on us that Sunday, May the 9th. 
to honor these women who have cared for us and loved us as a mother. The, um, meeting this week is the council meeting on April the 28th. At 6.15 p.m. PM in the chapel, the pastor gathers anyone who would like to have some prayer time to do that at that time, 6.15. And at 7 o'clock in Fellowship Hall, the business of the council will be held um, for, for the meeting. And now I'd like to call on Mary Cowick, who has a couple of announcements. I would just like to thank everyone that's been participating in bringing cereal for our food ministry. And with Christine's help here, we have some pictures. This is what we do in the morning when we get there. We set up about eight to ten tables like this. See the blue crates underneath? They come with, the trucks come and deliver the food. And it's all mixed up. It can be tomatoes with avocados and apples. So then it's separated. You see how we separate the vegetables? We try to get the same type of thing together so that when the people go through, they can see what's available. And then here are like the cereals that you all have collected. And we never have enough cereal. We get about 75 cars that come each Monday. Um, so any time that you can bring a box of cereal, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you for your cooperation. And if I just say a word, this is a slide from last Saturday night, yes, maybe Saturday before, when the sandwiches that we made were distributed as a part of the free school supplies and food that was distributed at the corner of Hilton and um, in North Avenue there at John Wesley Church. The uh, big fellow in the orange shirt is Greg Galt. He's uh, probably, I think he's the only white member of that congregation, but he's the leader of the Mission Project. And uh, Greg has been a friend for a long time. And uh, he, he and I set things out. And uh, there are folks that come and receive that. That picture was sent to us uh, with the message Please extend our thanks to the Trinity Congregation for the many, many sandwiches that you sent. They were all distributed and very well received. So many thanks from the John Wesley Congregation. And now at this time, I would like to say a special greeting to all of you who are joining our recorded worship service. It is a joy to share this experience with you wherever you may be tuning in. We would love to hear from you. So if you have any comments, questions on the sermon, or prayer requests, you can email us at trinitycatesvillepastor at gmail.com. And now I would like to say, the peace of Christ be with you. And also you. And now I'll share that peace by waving to our church friends here at Trinity. I pray to the camera to acknowledge those that are watching on at their homes. Oh, one more time. One more. Oh, I said all that. Never mind. <laughs> I turned the page. And this is the day that the Lord has made.
And if we can know that uh, this day, Lord, you made that for us to go out and experience your great love and to share it with others. And here today, we just want to rejoice in the Lord's goodness for this day. Let's pray. Lord, indeed, this is the day that you have made. And we believe you have made us to be in it. We believe that uh, your presence is with us to guide us, to protect us, and also to send us forth with your spirit, with your love, for the sake of bringing your light into a darkened world. And so we would ask that in this time that we were here, that we are here, that you might fill us with your light. Let it be the light of love. Let it be the light of joy and the light of peace. Let it also be the light, Lord, of fairness and goodness. Help us, Lord, to be so enamored of your light at this time that we continue to see it as a guiding light in our lives every day of the coming week. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the great songs of praise of the church is over a thousand tongues to sing. And I believe that this is Matthew uh, Cherian. You know, we have a lot of songs that Matthew sang for us, and uh, this is his version of over a thousand tongues to sing.
called to the newness of life in Christ, bow before the Lord to acknowledge that too often the ashes of the old life deaden our response. We cry out with the psalmist of old, May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. Now let's silently pray to the Lord. Now join with me our prayer of confession. Gracious source of abundant life, we confess that we do not always accept the new growth your love would give us. We humbly recognize and lament that all too often we do not see the beauty that is in this world for us to enjoy. Do not open ourselves to the love that is offered to us each day. We still are too busy with our own tasks and needs to see if they even fit into our intentions for us. Still live in fear when your love should release us to life. Forgive us, O God, and help us to accept your gift of resurrection and the resurrected life. Amen. Amazing grace. Sunday, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the revival of the church, is to have uh, a late afternoon outdoor service, pending the weather, where we will bring out a keyboard and we can all sing together, outdoors, it will be good. So you will see more of this in our communications, but mark that as a time when all those songs you didn't get to sing here, we can sing outside and rejoice together. Oh yeah, and I think after our council meeting on Wednesday night, we'll be putting the cushions back in the pews and we can enjoy that as well. And that means, uh, of course, Pastor Bob. Pastor Bob, we'll have cushions in the pews for the service where you preach. And I think that's good because, um, what did the old professor say? The mind can only absorb what the seat can endure. Well, you can do a lot more mindful work. Next Sunday, I will be away. Pastor Bob will be your pastor at the communion and bringing the message. My hope is that in these times together, while we can't sing, we still sing to the Lord, do we not? I mean, you can just feel those songs, especially ones you've known for a long time, just resonate through your body. And also, you know, we feel our prayers. 
to the Lord as well. The Lord's presence is embracing us as we worship here and us then just looking up from our places of weakness, looking over from our stations of need, also sharing moments of brightness from the joys of our time. We just come and offer our prayers to God. What I think is wonderful is that as we come together, my prayer becomes the prayer of us all. Your prayer becomes the prayer of us all. We can just feel just this great incense of our prayers rising to the heart of God. So, uh, Bobby, our lay leader, will bring some joys and concerns, and then we'll see what we may want to add to that. It is good to be here this morning, and as Gloria reminded us, the weatherman has promised us for Wednesday is going to be in the 80s, so we certainly do look forward to that summer-like weather, even though it's just spring. Um, we have two birthdays we want to celebrate. The first is uh, Pastor uh, Joan and Pastor David's daughter, Heather, is having her birthday, and this is a really special one for her. It's her 21st. So we offer the joy of that. Absolutely. My daughter, Michelle, has a birthday on Tuesday, and she will be 38. <laughs> so, um, we also have some concerns. Several people are waiting for test results, and we ask for prayers of comfort and strength. And we especially want to keep Carolyn Jenkins in, in our prayers. Also, a group of us yesterday had the opportunity to be with Robin Hurl, who we know is going through chemotherapy for her cancer. And she uh, looked marvelous yesterday, was feeling well, and it really was a joy for several of us to be with her. And uh, she told us that she only has three more treatments to, to uh, to do in this particular session. Are there any other people who would like to share prayers and concerns? Yes. Yeah, Susan? And I just want to tell my husband turned 65. Okay, turned 65. All right. All right. Well, may it be a great turn. <laughs> it's a celebrate day. Amen. Amen. Add that to our birthdays. Michelle? We want to thank everyone who had a little prayer for Christina for her job interview. However, she didn't get to done this time. Ah. Uh, but I told her we are assured that God has one plan for her mm -hmm. to accept mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. to happen. So uh, whenever that happens, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a part of education, too, is it not? Learning to do those interviews. And yes, definitely. Oh. Oh. I, and the recruiter, I told the recruiter, keep me a post with her. Yeah. So Sure, for sure. And we trust that uh, you'll get a good word on that soon. Amen. Amen. Others, that we may look to the Lord. Yeah, Dan? Uh, my sister just completed 12 radiation treatments. Wow. It's going well? So, uh, well, the radiation treatment is done now. She's recovering. She just feels tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully, good results from um, uh, your sister's radiation treatments. Amen. Amen. Uh, we keep uh, our uh, church in our prayers. You know, it's interesting that, that we proceed our council meeting with uh, prayer in the chapel um, because what's really important is that the work that we do uh, not just be done well, but be done with the consciousness of the Lord's leadership in, in all that we do. So whether you're able to come to the 6 o'clock prayer session in the chapel or not, let's all keep that uh, council meeting on uh, Wednesday evening uh, in our prayers. Amen? Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we uh, come to proclaim among ourselves and before all the world that you, our God, are a wonderful God. You who created this universe. You, O oh Lord, who must smile upon us as we glory with the fact that we can sit here on Earth and operate a tiny helicopter on Mars. You, O oh Lord, 
who know that that's just an inch on an extended yardstick that goes on forever. And you know it all. You've created it all. And you love it all. And yet, you know each one of us. And open yourself to be known by us so that we might walk together. We pray, O oh Lord, that your presence might overwhelm us each day. That we may fill you fast in the rustling grass. We may know your presence just around us. And may always rejoice because you are our God. We come and bring to you, Lord, our concerns this week. We share first our joys to say that we give thanks for birthdays celebrated and anticipated and live through on to the next year of a new life for Michelle, for Dave, for Heather, for all those celebrating birthdays and continuing to celebrate. May your goodness and peace and may it be just another sign for all of us that life is good and you intend it to be just filled with goodness. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with those uh, who are going through the times of recovering health. If you would uh, be standing by Carolyn as she waits for results from her biopsy. If you would accompany Dan's sister as she uh, recovers and gains strength from and gains the goodness from the range of radiation treatments. We thank you, Lord, for the way you've been with Robin and pray that you will continue to uphold her as she continues and yet finishes the course of treatments that, through which she is going. Be with us all, Lord, because we all look for better health and strength. May we know that it comes from you. May we know that uh, you will it in our lives. And we give ourselves to you. Bless our church, O oh Lord. We thank you for that which we're able to do. That we can provide a few boxes of cereal here and some lunches there. And may it always be out of our heart and in our intentions to do all we can to produce that which is needed by others as a sign of this is what our life is about. And extend our community as we become a part of other congregations that are reaching out where they are. And help us, Lord, to be the beautiful body of Christ that you intend us to be. Bless our work here, that we may grow in faith, and that we may be the brightest light that we can be in this community, so that your love, your truth, your goodness may be seen by all. Take each one of us, Lord, and lead us by hand. For much we need you. We pray in Jesus' name, and as he taught us, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
take this time just to express our appreciation to uh, Ann Mellinger for all her playing. You know, usually you don't really hear her because she's accompanying somebody else, right? Or she's playing a song that we're very attentive to. But today, to just uh, hear you play the organ for us to enjoy, we thank you very much and for all the work that you have done to arrange these pieces of recorded music that we enjoy Sunday by Sunday. We just want to thank you. So, so we just <laughs> You didn't see Anne way back in response. <laughs> and at the same time, just have to say a word of thanks to all the members of our congregation who have taken time to remain after a service and record a solo or a, a duet or a trio or whatever uh, for our service. It just means an awful lot. Uh, worship is to be the work of the people. And indeed in that, we see our work together in providing worship. So many, many thanks. Oh, and keep up the good work. Amen? Amen. Amen. The scripture reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. 23 to 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or a sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. And now please stand as I read the gospel which is, comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life toward the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command, from my Father. And this is the word of the Lord. Oh, we've all heard lots of sermons about the Good Shepherd. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and the more I look into um, what uh, material there is provided for this Sunday, the more I thought, gee, I think we've all heard that. <laughs> we've probably heard that many times. And so it is not with any thought that I have that I'm uh, showering you with some new revelations. I think all I'm doing is just uh, saying once again how good it is to have a good shepherd. Amen? As a matter of fact, 
Um, I think Jesus is all too modest when he says, I am the good shepherd. Because after his resurrection, he becomes more than good. He becomes great. Yeah? It's the words uh, in, the, uh, in the book of uh, Hebrews, 13th chapter, where we're reminded that we have this great shepherd who is uh, Jesus Christ. The greatness of his shepherding is, it, is that it's not something that is past. It is something that is present and ongoing taken up by the last verses of the scripture that was read where Jesus says, I lay it down, but I can also take my life up again. And in many ways, Jesus takes up his life again in order to continue his work of shepherding. Just a word about how this uh, scripture from John 10 comes about. It's very interesting because in John 9 is that story of the blind man. And you know that when John tells a story, he tells a story. It takes a whole chapter for him to tell a story about the man who was blind, given sight to see. Man who has no name, just known as the formerly blind man. And that the people of his community had the hardest time dealing with it. They just couldn't understand how somebody who had been blind can now see. And how it happened in the flash of a moment. And how it happened by the touch of someone whose name is Jesus, someone who they didn't think had the authority to do that. Someone who knew, who they knew, didn't have a healing license, didn't come from the temple, but just came out of Nazareth and could do these marvelous things and made this man who had been blind now to have sight. But what happens is, is that the religious rulers of the day call him in to try to figure out how they're going to fit him into the pattern of their life, how to identify how this thing could have happened without them knowing or authorizing it. Yeah, how can something new happen without us knowing about it? <laughs> it's always kind of interesting how it is that God wants to bring new things into life and how the people who are living that life too often reject those things because I don't know anything new, I'm still dealing with what's old. But this newness, this formerly blind man, was self-evident miracle. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders, rulers, were not able to deal with that. So you know what they did? You know what they did? They threw him out of the temple, threw him out of the synagogue. You have no place among us. You're still just a sinner. I don't care how much you can see. Right after that comes this 10th chapter where Jesus says, I'm not like the hired hands. I am the good shepherd. Because we know that what happened after the man is thrown out, Jesus goes to him and says, do you believe in me? And the man says, I know you made me be able to see. And Jesus invites him to become a part of a new community that he's putting together that doesn't throw people out, but takes people in. And then Jesus goes from there to talk about how he is the good now among us as the great shepherd and picks a figure out of the ancient scriptures to identify with himself to help us understand how he is present with us now. In the rustling grass, I hear him pass. Not as a stranger, see, not just as a healer or a teacher, but as a shepherd. Our shepherd. Now, if he is our shepherd, what does that make us? His sheep, right? Sheep, shepherd, ram, so forth, are prominently mentioned in 500 times. In fact, I didn't count them. Somebody else did not read it. 500 times in the scripture mentioned about sheep and shepherd. Isn't that interesting? And more and more mentioned as, um, as exemplary of God's relationship with us. Let's look at a couple of them. One we've already looked at, and there's a 23rd Psalm. And what you have to look at in there is uh, not just the joy of saying those familiar words, but what does it say about what the shepherd does? See, you remember, leads us to good pasture besides still waters. What does that mean? Provides nourishment and peace 
and security. Not only that, but supplies an overflowing cup of blessing, blesses us. The shepherd blesses us, see? The shepherd fills us with good things. The shepherd provides, what does it say? A table before us, where? In the presence of our enemies. And the Lord constantly nourishing us to deal with that which is against us. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Or as we said this morning, for as long as we live, which is forever. Amen? So, also the shepherd assures our future, our ongoingness. Now, it's an interesting thing. Sheep, you see, we have one right here. Sheep are a, 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 a powerful commodity in the scriptures. Um, because they're a source of uh, livelihood for people. And they provide food. They provide clothing from their wool. Their skins provide shelter on many of the tents. In fact, a lot of people's worth is known by how many sheep they got. I mean, they didn't have a stock market, so they couldn't say where you go for that. They'd say, how many sheep do you have? However, sheep were also known as affectionate and largely non-aggressive and therefore very vulnerable constantly needing care and guidance, it said. And we know that from Isaiah. All we like sheep have gone astray and wandered off in our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. But very valuable. Only if they are owned and it is held in good order by somebody. Yeah? You have sheep going off and starting their own household. You had sheep that were held together by an owner who either would be the shepherd or would hire a shepherd or get his youngest son to be the shepherd uh, and watch the sheep. There probably were even female shepherds, although not much written of them, but somebody to watch over them because they always needed that. And that's us. If God is our shepherd, we the sheep. We're the ones that have to be protected and cared for. Do you feel that way yourself? No. Well, maybe you do. Sometimes. Huh? I need help here. I need protection here. I need guidance here. And it's given. However, a lot of big time, a lot of big um, place in scripture where the shepherd is mentioned is in the 34th chapter of Ezekiel, where Ezekiel spends the whole chapter talking about God as the shepherd. And now I'm away from my notes, and I don't know if I can remember everything that I said. But we'll try. I mean, if you can't remember it without your notes, it's not worth it anyway, right? You've got to have it in your heart, not just in your notebook somewhere. But in the 34th chapter, God says, you know, a lot of those who call themselves your shepherd are pretenders. And they're not interested in your welfare. They're interested in their own. And therefore, he says, when the time comes, I'm going to get rid of all of them. And I'm going to be your shepherd. I think he's talking about Jesus. I'm going to be your shepherd, he says. And I will provide for you. And then he starts going on and on about all the things God says that God is going to do for us as our shepherd. And he says, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll seek the lost. Somewhere, there is a great picture of the good shepherd. You've seen it. It's usually just a black and white drawing of him reaching down over a cliff and finding his little lamb that's lost and picking it back up. Prime work of the good shepherd is to find those who are lost and gather them back in again. And then when he gathers them back in again, the good shepherd God says, a good shepherd, what I'll do is I'll heal every one of them. I'll make the weak strong. Right? And I'll make those who are sick, I'll make them well. He doesn't say it. I'll give sight to the blind. 
So every time Jesus does one of those kind of things, he's showing himself, obviously, to be the good shepherd. Beyond that, God says, as the good shepherd, I will shepherd them. I will take care of them. I will gather them together. I will be the spirit of unity that will bring all together. And I will see that no one gets left out. And I will see that no one gets mistreated. I will judge with justice between the rich and the poor. And then he goes on to say, you can read it, I'm not making this up. It's in chapter 34 of Ezekiel. I will go on to see that the rich don't elbow the poor out of the way. And I will go on to see that the well to do don't travel the earth for all the rest of us, nor will they pollute the water for the rest. Isn't that interesting? This is Ezekiel. <laughs> this is long before we had the Environmental Protection Agency. God said he would do that, right? And I want to make sure that there is an environment in which all can live. And then he says, I will send one ship who will look over it, gather you all together. Make sure your peace is good and secure. So what he does in that moment is elevate the Psalm 23 into a wider perspective. Psalm 23 talks about how to take care of me. Ezekiel 34, God says, I'll take care of you in a way that puts you in a community that takes care of everybody, that looks for the well-being of all. Make sure that everybody's life is guarded and protected and cared for. God says that time will come. So when Jesus picks up this image and says, he is the good shepherd, he moves it a step forward as well. Well, actually, two steps forward. One, as soon as he said, you know, another way to interpret good shepherd, you know what it is? You can say he is the beautiful shepherd. <laughs> and I don't want this to go like into Victoria's Secret, but it means it could also be interpreted he is the model shepherd, right? Not that he's the best looking shepherd around, but he is the mold of the shepherd as it should be. You make a shepherd like this and you've got the right shepherd, right? And right after Jesus says that, do you know what he says? And as your shepherd, he said, I'll lay down my life for you. Yeah? No, what? no shepherd has ever said that before. Not in Ezekiel 24, not in Psalm 23, nowhere. But Jesus says, here's the deal. Here's what a good shepherd is. I'll lay down my life for you. Because I do that according to God's will. And I'll take it up again because it's according to God's will. All right? I will show you everything that a good shepherd is, and he does, including makes the ultimate risk. Now, we know shepherds took risks. They had to fight off the wolves. Many of them lay across the, the opening through which sheep would go into the sheepfold and put their light down as uh, the guard against anything destructive coming in, which is the main job of a shepherd, to keep the sheep from being destroyed by other forces, and they would lay his life down there. And Jesus says, I take that literally, I will lay down my life for you. And he watched him do that, see? That's the crucifixion. He's laying down his life for us. But then he says, and I'll pick it back up again. Why does he pick it back up again? He picks it back up again so that he can go from being a good shepherd, present and making the blind. See, to being the great shepherd, available for us, guiding us, leading us every day. So when Jesus comes back in his resurrection appearances, if you look at him, you will see that he is being the good shepherd in every one of them, right? He comes back not with, just, not with a ta-da, look how wonderful this is that I'm back as, as, and alive again, but he comes back ministering to his people, being a good shepherd to his people. Yeah. The first thing he says when he comes back is what? Peace. I lead you beside the still waters. Now, the other thing he does is eat with them. You know, I'll provide for your nourishment. There's a great scene where Jesus shows them to fish on this side of the boat so he catch other fish. It's an interesting story, but what it means is that Jesus provides for the nourishment. And 
then at another time, he breathes on them the spirit of forgiveness. And we know that with Thomas and with Peter, he just nourishes them with the spirit of forgiveness and gives that to them. What Jesus is saying, I'm going to be with you. You, 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 and you, and all of us, every day, I'm going to be there. And I'm going to be your shepherd. And I'm going to be providing the forgiveness you need. I'm going to give you the peace that you need. You just have to recognize it when it's there. Recognize it when it's there. One of the things that they say about shepherd, and this corrected me too, because I always thought the shepherds I saw were kind of like walking behind the sheep. And if you watch them, um, they, would, they would watch the ones that would wander this way. And the sheep, instead of keeping going like this toward the pasture, they start to wander that way like that. And they had a sack of stones that they kept in their bag. And they would pick a stone and throw it over there. And that sheep would reel this way and get back in line again. And I always thought the shepherd was the one they kept in line. But they said, no, the real description of the shepherd is the one that's out in front of them that's leading See, one of the things we got to do is know that Jesus is not just behind us to kick us when we don't do what's right, but he's out in front of us to lead us forward toward what is right. And we have to allow that leadership to happen. And you know that it happens. You know that sometimes in spite of yourself, there are happenstances that put you in the right place at the right time, right? <laughs> I'm checking the clock. Perfect. I had it experience the other day was we were looking for a new car. The radio doesn't work in my car. You can't have a car with no radio. <laughs> it's got other things wrong with it too. You know, I have the air conditioning. So we're looking for a new car. And the fellow we talked with went to great, I don't know, it's because he found out that both my wife and I are pastors. But he told us this wonderful story about how God, he didn't say God, but I know it was God arranged for his wife to be in the right place at the right time so she could be there for her family. And it was one thing after another that made that happen. It's the good shepherd in our lives. We just need to look for him. Look for the one who's going to guide us. Look for the one who's going to treat us with peace. Who's going to bring us that which is fair. Who's going to provide for us that which gathers together. Look for that one. Because that's the great shepherd. And he is there. And he is there always. And wants never to let us down. I'm convinced that the reason Jesus is resurrected by God is that God wants him to be among us as our shepherd. One, because we need him. Two, because God wants us to have a wonderful life. Finally, it is really interesting to know that in John's, I think it's the 21st chapter, when, when Jesus forgives Peter for denying him, and he wants to tell Peter that everything is okay between us, oh, which is one of the great things. I mean, this whole wonder about the shepherd means God is with us and we are with God. And that unity is there because the shepherd is there to provide it. But what Jesus says to him after he says to him, um, you love me, is what? Be my sheep and my flock. Which means Jesus wants to pass that shepherding role on to all of us. I know we Help the great shepherd look after the flock, providing nourishment when it's needed, speaking the word of peace, being the one who is fair and equal among us, and being the one who looks after the earth and the water, being the good shepherd, be my sheep. Oh, he's there. He's the model. We just have to follow him. Maybe learn to recognize him. Maybe we learn to see him here and pass in the rustling grass or feel him in the gentle breeze or know us in the firm nudge or just see how he's working in our lives. But well, may we learn to know him so that uh, our lives are given the security, the freedom from fear, 
but most of all, the abundant life which Jesus wishes to provide. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, again and again and again, we know you as the Good Shepherd. Help, it, help us also, Lord, to again and again and again to be able to recognize you in our lives, pointing us in this direction, shoving us where we need to shove in order to get going in that direction by giving us the power of love, of hope, of trust, and of faith to find our way forward. We ask it all in Jesus' name. In place of a spoken affirmation this morning, I would offer a song called Because He Lives.
louder than usual with him. But some good word, good word, because he lives, and we know he lives as our good shepherd. And one of the offerings that we make to God, this is the time of offering, one of the offerings we make to God is our gathering here, is it not? We offer this gathering, Lord, unto your praise, unto your glory. We offer this to you. And as we come, we make our individual offerings of our money, our, our gifts. And, 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 and we ask that they be collectively brought together, see, so that some great goodness uh, can be done. And we wish uh, no one to be left out. You know, I was a hireling once. So we've all been hired. I, I think I'm still kind of like a hired man. But I worked for this farmer. And 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 uh, one of the big things I did, as anybody would do, would be to harvest the crops, right? And it was there, and it was there. We got into the field, and we'd get everything in. And then uh, Mr. Will would be waiting in the truck, waiting for us to get it all done. And I come on, I got in the truck, and Mr. Will, it's all done. And he looked over the field and said, "No, it's not, Dave." He said, "There's one more little stalk right over there." No, oh, Mr. Will, it's nothing. He said, "No, you gotta get them all." And he took out his pen knife and he gave it. To I put the tools away. And he took out his pen knife and gave it to me and said, you go over and cut that stuff. And I went over and uh, walked over all the stuff that we had already harvested and then cut that last stuff down. And then Mr. Will said, now you know, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. <laughs> Mr. Will will be surprised to know that I'm using him as an example. That's the Lord. Every last one of us gathered in. And that's our offering to the Lord today. Praise God. Whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Christ is made your foundation. Thank you. 